Hello again, welcome back to Rouse Reviews and Demos. If it's your first time here, welcome. Today is the day we are doing the in-depth feature review on the Sony V90 Muteki. Um, so I gotta tell you, this is one of my absolute favorite party speakers I've tested. The bass is insane, it's very loud. Uh, it has a ton of functionality. The lighting is awesome, as you can see in my other videos. But let me tell you right off the bat here, I'm not doing any music this video. This is just about the features and the speaker itself. Uh, if you want to hear music, I got five, six other videos on the channel. Go check them out. You can hear the thing play some music. So usually when I'm testing these speakers, I can find a lot of things that I don't like about a speaker. Um, there's really not too many things I don't like about this. But there is one thing that really gets on my nerves. So I apologize in advance to all the viewers if my woman out there makes a bunch of racket during the video. All right, so there's one thing I really didn't like about the speaker, um, and I'll show you what it is. So it has wheels on the back, and to move it, you, there is a handle on the top back here. I'll show it to you. You got to lean it back, and then it'll roll. And you can see it's not rolling, right? Because the wheels are up so high, you really got to get the thing leaned back to get it to roll. So let me show you. Let me get it to where I can lean it back. See, this is the problem. If you're going in a corner, you don't have enough room to wheel it into the corner and then stand it up, right? So you got to get it close and then kind of walk it back in there. And the speaker is not very light. It's 110 pounds. So if you lean it back, you see I got to get to there. And that's where it starts rolling, right? And you can see I got extreme angle here. So that's where it starts rolling. As soon as you get it up to there, it doesn't roll anymore. So if you, like I said, if you're rolling this back in the corner, you're, you're still four feet away from the corner before you can stand it up and get it back in there. So yeah, it won't roll until you get to right there. That's a lot. So that kind of stinks. They should have done a better job on the wheels. So again, once you get it, you know, once you get it, say you roll it back to this corner here, right? I roll it back. I can only get so close. I got to stand it up and then walk it back in there. So that's the one thing I really didn't like about the speaker. Um, other than that, I pretty much like everything. Now, some of my prior videos, I made a mistake. This model is the V90W. There's actually two models. There's the V90W and the V90DW. The V90W, this one, doesn't have an optical or an HDMI cable. Uh, I don't know why you would want that for a party speaker, but um, this model doesn't have it. The plain W doesn't have it. So if you know, you're kind of curious why I said that, check out my last upload. Uh, I kind of go over why I wouldn't need an optical or a HDMI on a party speaker. So, uh, yeah, that's it for moving the speaker. I said it's pretty heavy. It comes in two pieces. There's two screws here and two screws on the other side. Uh, the top is very light. It's only like, uh, I want to say it's about 30 pounds, 35 pounds. All the weights in the bottom where the amps are and the woofers and the big magnets and everything. So, uh, yeah, it comes in two pieces. Takes about five minutes to assemble it. No big deal. And uh, there you go. So we're gonna get a little closer. We're gonna check out the features on the speaker now. Um, I'll show you some of the things I like about it, some of the things I don't. Okay, so here's the up close of the control panel here. We'll start off with some of the easier stuff. You got your function button, which you know you choose your input here. Your radio, audio in, which is your RCA cables in the back. Uh, this will stream music off the network. CD player, which works great. It's right here. So there's your CD player. Uh, no skipping or anything when the bass is full blast. And uh, you also have a microphone jack and a guitar jack here. Uh, you also have your USB. So you can put a bunch of folders on here and music and play right off of that. Works great. Tried that. Then you have your light mode. There's a bunch of different settings. 
And I got to tell you, there really isn't a big difference between the settings. Uh, you can turn the lights off, on. You can party chain this. You can add other speakers. Uh, then you have your guitar on and off. Your guitar mic level here, volume for that. Now uh, your mega bass. The Fiesta is a sound type. And sound field is all your different equalizers. There's a bunch of them on there. I usually just keep it on custom equal or the custom EQ because uh, I like it custom. Uh, so I keep it on that. Um, so I have plugged the FM antenna into the speaker and the one that comes with it. And I couldn't get even the easiest stations to get. So I don't recommend this if you're buying it for a radio unless you have an outdoor large FM antenna. So a lot of the controls, um, you work with the, with the remote control, which is right here. And let's see if the focus is in on that pretty good. Do, do, do. So to adjust the equalizer, say you go to options and this is a subwoofer, you can adjust that. Uh, if you don't want to go subwoofer, you press the down button to get there's custom EQ and it's a seven band onboard seven band equalizer. It's a little easier to set up with the application because you can see all the levels. And then it has surround sound. I got to tell you, the surround sound works great. It sounds really good. I've been keeping it on pretty much all the time at this point. And I'll show you how that works in a minute here. Um, basically, to turn it on and off, you just arrow up or arrow down. And honestly, this thing has quite a few settings. You got your, you can change your Bluetooth codec, your bit rate. This is uh, the automatic standby, so it shuts itself off after a bit. Um, there's all kinds of settings. Uh, the gesture controls I don't really like so much. They work, but I like using it on the app better. It's just more responsive. So you see you move your hands here, and it does different stuff. Um, like I said, I think it's just more responsive when you use the app to control it. So I'll show you the app real quick. There's actually two apps for this uh, for this speaker. You got the Fiestable app, which is this guy right here. So in the Fiestable app, you have your DJ controls, illumination, karaoke, and motion controls. The motion controls are real simple. Basically, if you move your phone, it makes sounds. Uh, and then karaoke, that's we'll get to that in a minute. Illumination, you can customize your illumination. And flash A, you can see it on the woofer there. And then flash B, it just like, it, it changes it up a little bit, not much. And then custom, I do like the custom because I like the woofers white. So you can just kind of set the colors of the woofers with the custom color, uh, which I do like that. I do like the, the, the white. I'm sorry if you hear any ding, and that's my text messages going off. So yeah, those are your those are your illumination controls, and then you have DJ control, right? So this is why I like the app better. It's just more responsive. Turn the volume up so you guys can hear it. So you see, it's just it's just more responsive than using the gesture controls. Much more responsive. I ain't no musician. And then you have your scratch. Stays all the same no matter where you put your finger. Audience. You have the voice. I always like the voice better than most of the other stuff. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Disco. 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 Here we go. Let's go. This, 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 this. Come on. It's pretty cool, right? And then you have the phaser, which is cool for Star Trekky guys. Uh, reggae horn, which you gotta have. Rhythm. I don't know why you'd use that, but they have it. 
Uh, then you have the robot voice. Do right, bounce, bounce. Do right, bounce, bounce. Bounce. You say bounce. Bounce. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Start. 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 I'm not sure what that's saying. I can't. Start. Figure, can't start. Figure. It sounds like scratch kind of, but I can't figure it out. Start. Do right, do, 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 do right. So the robots are always cool. And then these other um, settings up here, the isolator, the flanger, and all that, they basically just sound the, change the sound of the music you're listening to. Uh, so your karaoke controls are all here also. You got to plug a mic in to use them. I'm not going to do that. But basically with the karaoke, you have the same thing a lot of the other units have. You have the vocal fader, uh, which you can actually, if you put this on... If you put it on karaoke, you can adjust this stuff. So you got the vocal fader, which will cut the vocals out of the song you're listening to. So you can sit, you know, sing along. Um, I got to tell you, it works well for slower songs that are less complicated. If you get into like some crazy heavy metal, some fast, complicated music, it has a little bit tougher time canceling the vocals out. Uh, then you have your voice changer and what that does it actually changes the key of the vocals in the song to more match your key then you have echo you can put the echo on the microphone and make it echo some and score basically they have like a karaoke game as well that's what this score is all about so before you start to sing along you press score and it'll actually score you on how you do from zero to 99 points uh, singing a song. So I guess you could compete with your buddies and stuff uh, if you were into that sort of thing. So that's what the score is all about. Uh, like I said, the voice changer changer changes the vocal range of the, um, the vocals. So they match yours a little bit better. Uh, and you can either sing along or you can use the vocal fader to cut the vocals out. So that's pretty much it for the karaoke. Again, you know, I may miss something. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and hit me up in the comments and I'll answer any questions that you have. And let's go ahead and move on to the back of the speaker here. Uh, you can see the speaker has uh, four four-inch mids and four two-inch tweeters. And then you got your two 10-inch uh, woofers down there. And I do, I got to tell you, man, this thing totally rocks. Uh, really puts out some bass. Uh, if you guys want to see music, like I said earlier, you can check some of my last uploads. Uh, back of the speaker. So this is where this, this is called the spread sound generator. Uh, when you put this around on, you get more sound out of the back here. And it really works great and it sounds awesome. Uh, again, here's your handle I was talking about earlier. It's very comfortable on your hand to move the speaker around. And then the back here, they got a little slot if you want to stick your phone in there. And I'm not sure what this slot's for, but I would imagine the same thing if you want to stick your phone in there or keep the remote in there or something like that just to store it. Um, then you have uh, the back of the speaker basically only has, because this is the W model, like I said, only has the RCA inputs and uh, has a LAN connection. Uh, so you can hook up right to your network and stream audio that way. It'll be a little faster. Uh, then you have, these are basically just the cables to connect the top of the speaker to the control panel. So your lighting and sound comes out. And it also has this little doohickey here, which is really makes moving it easier. You could just take the plug and stick it in here and just makes it a little easier to move it around. And that's basically it for the back of the speaker. There's, you know, the wheels we were talking about earlier. So I think that's pretty much it for the Sony V90 Muteki uh, in-depth feature review. Uh, like I said, I love this speaker. It's, I think it's probably the best party speaker on the market for functionality, lighting, and sound. Um, the Party Box 1000 has better sound quality, uh, but... It's about the same price as this. Uh, this thing has way more bass. I don't think it's quite as loud as the Party Box 1000, but it has way more bass. Uh, it's probably not quite as clear either, but again, it has way more bass. Uh, overall, I just like this speaker better. The lighting is so cool too. Uh, the Party Box 1000 is beautiful also with the flames and everything. Don't get me wrong. It's just um, I, I just didn't like the bass on the Party Box 1000. Once you got the full volume, it really lost a lot of the bass. This thing doesn't do that. This thing rocks all the way through the volume. 
So would I recommend this speaker? I don't know if I'd pay the full retail price for it, which is 1300 uh, bucks. I got it on sale for $800, which was a great deal, and it's totally worth that. Uh, as some of you know, I've actually been testing this alongside of the LG OK99. And the OK is much louder than this speaker. Uh, the problem with the OK99 for me is my room's too small. You really need a large room for that speaker. Where this speaker here, if you got a, a room at least 15 by 15, you're good to go. Uh, with the 210s, it just works out better than having the 12 inch. So yeah, this is a great speaker. It's a lot of fun to play with. Uh, should you buy it, that's your call. If you need help making that decision, check out my last upload. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. Like always, y'all have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'll be glad to answer anything I can as quickly as I can. And uh, appreciate y'all watching. Hit the like button. We'll see you next time. Cheers.